Happy Wednesday, Mission Hills. By my calculations, this is week 17 of our wonderful coronavirus experience. And I, I, I tell you, I, I was thinking this morning, in a, a culture that we live in that's, for the most part, used to quick fixes, this experience of the coronavirus is really teaching us more about the word endurance, maybe more than any of us would ever want to learn. Um, but it's true. I mean, talk about things dragging on. 17 weeks, for us, that's just a long time to do anything that's difficult. And maybe what's added to the difficulty is the fact that we really don't have any idea how much longer we're going to be in this sort of strange, different lifestyle. Uh, how much longer will we be faced with daily all the impact of the coronavirus? So uh, I think that unknown future also adds to uh, the challenge for us. So endurance is required. And this morning I was thinking about Psalm 34, Psalm of David, where he's just praising God. But the foundation of his praise isn't circumstances, either favorable or difficult. The foundation of his praise is the goodness of God. And it reminded me that my praise needs to be based simply on that as well. Certainly when Circumstances are favorable. Things go my way. I have, if you will, additional reason to praise God, but the necessary foundational reason to praise God is because of his goodness. So I'm just hoping, I'm, I'm going to read Psalm 34 for you, and just hoping that God would encourage your heart as he did mine, and maybe clear a little bit of your perspective, because he certainly cleared mine with this psalm. So listen to Psalm 34, Psalm of David. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and rejoice. O oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he answered me, actually. And he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and they were radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of, all of his, out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear him, those who are in awe of him, those who give him his due reverence. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for to those who fear him there is no want. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who's the man who desires life? And who is the man who loves length, the length of days? that he may see good. Well, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their, their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Oh, praise God. What a beautiful psalm. You take refuge in God, and we know in the New Testament context, refuge then comes to its fullest understanding in the life of Jesus. So you take refuge in Jesus, and you will not be condemned. My goodness, there is no better news in all of the world. So you put that larger context of the salvation of the God, the removal of condemnation. Nothing's better than that. That means that inside of that context of salvation, as we experience difficulties, coronavirus, whatever that means for all of us. The larger context is one of great praise because our greatest problem has been solved. God has removed the condemnation. So I trust that God would encourage you 
through Psalm 34. Praise him. Praise him. It's necessary. And we praise him because he's good. Amen. All right. Some things I'd like you to know. We've been meeting for two weeks on Sunday mornings here at church on campus in the church parking lot. And while we continue to have our online service available, and we'll keep doing that every week at 9 o'clock, if you choose, come join us here. Many of you have already made that, um, taken that uh, option, and it's been great to be together. Um, Want to make sure that you are comfortable. The first week we had um, some cloud cover. The second week, uh, let's just say not so much. Uh, Fourth of July weekend, it was, it was pretty hot out there at 9 o'clock, 9.45. And so uh, this next week, I want to make sure you know, we are um, purchasing more uh, canopies. So we'll have more shade, a lot more shade. Uh, we will also be having some fans just to kind of blow some air to circulate it a bit, cool the temperature down in case it's hot like it was last week. And then we'll also have some big tubs of ice water, not to drink the ice water, I'm talking about ice where we can put some water bottles in there and keep the water bottles cool and cold for you. So that's what we'll be doing um, just to make sure things are comfortable. More shade, some fans, and some bottled water. So we'll offer those things to you this week as you come. And if you would, just uh, make your reservation. Uh, that just helps us know who's coming. There's room for anybody that wants to come. So don't feel like room is limited. Uh, but it would help us if you make a reservation. You can even do that up to the night before or the morning of. Just let us know that you're coming. That would help us. But we'd love to see you. And parents, I should say to you too, please um, bring your children. We have little Adirondack chairs for kids. You can also bring them a beach chair. We have other chairs. So there's plenty of seating. And we really desire that this could be a family experience um, with, with parents that have little kids. Um, that's one of the reasons, there are others, but that's one of the reasons why our service only runs about 45 minutes. Um, so, can't wait to see you. It's also important for me, very important for me, to let you know that the state and county guidelines for church services have been revised and clarified. Uh, if you were here last week, you know that we didn't sing songs. I told you that we were going to just press the pause button for a week on um, corporate singing. Uh, because it appeared from the guidelines that we were being asked not to do that uh, due to the uptick in corona cases and that uh, that could have a bad impact on the spread. So it was one more layer of precaution that was added to the guidelines. Well, I told you, though we wouldn't be singing Sunday, I wanted to get more clarification. And in fact, I did. In fact, there was some revision, some clarification made <clears throat> for all of us um, from the state and county guidelines saying that, that only the singing only refers to indoor services. So it does not apply to us. We will be singing this Sunday. We will be singing every Sunday praises to God together. So I don't want you wondering about that. Um, so that's good news. Join us this coming Sunday. It'll be comfortable. We'll be singing praises. We'll be able to be together and we'll be able to look into God's word in Romans chapter eight again. So I look forward to seeing you this Sunday morning. Now, I mentioned parents and kids. Uh, the day after tomorrow, this coming Friday, this coming Friday at 6 o'clock here in our church parking lot, the same place where we have our 9 o'clock service, we'll be putting together just a wonderful night of interactive worship for families. You have children from birth to sixth grade. Please bring them. Bring your whole family. And it'll be just a beautiful time of joyful worship as families and also a chance to interact. Obviously, we'll have some creative ways to do that so that we stay in keeping with the, uh, the guidelines for social distancing. Oh, but there's ways to have fun, even with those guidelines in place. And that will happen for sure this Friday evening, 6 o'clock here at the church. Um, we'd love to have you here. You go on the website. You can make your reservation there. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening. So... The last thing I want to let you know is uh, we recently had a congregational vote we do every June related to the coming year's fiscal budget, annual budget, as well as adding any of uh, any individuals to our elder board. Both the vote for our budget was overwhelmingly approved and the approval of Ken Davis as a new elder on our board at Mission Hills Church. So we're thankful for Ken. Congratulations to Ken. I'm thankful that he's on our board, and I want to thank you for participating in the congregational meeting, for voting both on the budget and on the new elder placement. 
Both passed overwhelmingly, as I said. So we are off and running in a new, if you will, fiscal year. But we've got great plans um, for the remainder of the summer. There'll be more family nights, um, other ways for us to interact. The students are meeting on Tuesday evenings and Wednesday evenings. There'll be some other things planned for our students. So uh, just stay tuned. We've got stuff planned, and then we're going to have a great kickoff, a great kickoff in September to um, our new ministry year. But that's still down the road a little bit. I'm just kind of excited as I think about the plans. Um, coronavirus or not, we are the church. We're staying together, sticking together, and we're moving forward together in ministry. Have a wonderful Wednesday, and I know you're looking forward to being a part of worship, whether it's online in your home or on campus here with us this Sunday, 9 o'clock. Love you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.